Okay, we're in section 12 on the ellipses and the hyperbolas. Again, the structure, it's really almost the same every single week. We go through lecture material, we go through examples. After we do that, you should study that material. And then what you should do is do the supplemental exercises that are contained in the notes. As you move forward educationally though, what you probably should do is read before becoming to before uh, you, you attend the lecture. And you know the reason for that is that then the lecture is gonna make a lot more sense to you. So for example, if you're taking, let's say a Calc 1 class and you know the teacher's gonna be covering certain material, looking at the syllabus, what you would do, or their course notes, what you would do is read that section of the textbook, work the examples. So then when you go to the exam, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the lecture, the lecture will seem a lot easier to you. All right. The worst thing that's happening in a lecture is you're going to go to a lecture, typically at a university level course, and you're going to sit through it and have no comprehension of what's being talked about. And that's why it's so important to prepare for lectures before you attend them. All right. But right now we're at the stage where we're going to go through this. All right. So I'm going to give you a you know, preview of what we're going to be doing over here. We're going to talk to the ellipse. We're certainly going to provide good pictures for you. And what I mean by that is there's indicated things in the picture. For one thing, I'm, do, I'm definitely seeing a picture of what I would say is an ellipse. And again, I hope you know what an ellipse is. Uh, maybe not by definition, but by appearance. That appears to me uh, to be an ellipse. What is it? A circle that's kind of like an elongated. It has some nature to it that looks like we stretched a circle out in one direction. Like in this, this thing over here, it looks like we, we, we took a circle and we stretched it um, in a vertical direction. All right. So there's going to be features over here. The features are going to be, you know, described to you. There's going to be a center of that. And clearly looking at it, I do see the center. I do see some axes going through here. Uh, one axis I see is the major axis. The other one is a minor one. What I mean by that is the length of it. This is smaller than this over here. So center. I'm seeing these points over here, which are called vertices. And we'll, again, we'll go through this at the whiteboard later. And these points over here are called the foci. Now, by the way, I also like to put these points down, all right? I like to put those points down. As we go through problem set, hopefully these become very simple to do. So my issue about this over here is that we need to be able to identify those features given the equation of an ellipse. And we will do that, all right? Now, again, over here, we talk about horizontal and vertical. I wouldn't worry so much about that. What I'd worry about is, can you get something that looks like this picture-wise? Now, when I do it graphically on paper, especially by hand, it's not gonna look very good, but we do provide you better pictures where these points can be just pulled off the picture. When I say pulled off, I'm not gonna say totally accurate, but for the most part, if we have the equation and we know what we're doing, we can get the exact. But again, we're looking for approximate pictures as well, hand-drawn, all right? So some terminology over here, I'm not big on memorizing this stuff over here. However, when you read a newspaper, you will see these words being used, particularly when they're talking about orbits of the moon. All right. So um, I, again, I wouldn't worry about it so much, but you should start to become familiar with this. One of the things that you're going to see in the in the problem set um, is going to be something about ex eccentricity. Again, it's defined. It's a technical term. It's defined with respect to. I hate the fact they use the letter E but E is for eccentricity and it's defined as a ratio C over A. We will talk through that, all right? Now, what I mean by that, we're gonna be going back and we're gonna be talking about the C's and the A's in the problem. Now, looking at it, I do see the A's, all right? But I don't see the C yet. If you look over here though, you're gonna see a formula for the C. It says C squared equals A squared minus B squared, all right? Now, by the way, the fact that they mentioned that, I hope you realize that if that's true, if C squared equals A squared minus B squared in a real number system, that A would have to be bigger than B. So over here, I want to claim to you that A would have to be bigger than B. All right, let's keep going. We're just going an overview. All right, next up with the hyperbola. Hyperbola and ellipse, the equations look somewhat similar. However, there is a difference. What's the difference going to be? It's subtraction. Whereas the ellipse was an addition problem. As we go through problem set, we will see this pop up, all right? Again, over here, we have pictures of it. I wanna put out in the pictures, we put down sort of like this, this symmetric line. It's an axis symmetry, it's a folding symmetry about this over here. There's a bunch of points looking at it. 
I'm going to say this clearly looks like a center of this picture. This looks like vertices to me. Yes, we use that word a lot in, um, in conic sections. And these things over here are foci. But again, we'll go through examples. We'll be rewriting these guys. And we're going to look at the pictures. What picture are we going to look at? Good pictures. Again, over here, I'm seeing a line of symmetry. I'm seeing a center. I'm seeing vertices. And these things are called foci. Again, we'll go to the whiteboard and we'll talk through that. All right. They give you forms of the um, asymptotes for these things over here. As we go through the problem sets and the introduction, we'll be talking about that. It's relatively simple. It relates back, back to what you did in Math 119 about looking at limits. Limits are new to you. I realized they were new in 119. And uh, they're, they're certainly new in 120 as well. We really don't talk about too much except for some of the trigonometric functions, you know, tangent, cotangent, cosecant, and secant. We had asymptotes there too, right? So we'll go through examples. And again, we'll look at these pictures. Why do we give you pictures? They're accurately drawn and it should make sense to you when things are accurately drawn, when I label these pictures, that these things need to be labeled. For example, this line needs to be labeled, that line needs to be labeled, that line needs to be labeled, and every single point in the picture needs to be labeled. And again, what are we looking for? We're looking for the graph of hyperbola. And again, we'll go through that. And then what are we gonna do? We're gonna go through examples. One thing at a time though, we're gonna stick with the notes first. This is the lecture portion, right? We just introduced, gave an overview of what we're gonna do, all right? So what I'm gonna do is gonna go to the whiteboard and <clears throat> I'm gonna talk through it, all right? So give me one second to switch screens. All right, you're seeing my whiteboard now. So again, what I'm gonna point out over here is we're in section 12 of the notes and this is going to be on the ellipses and the hyperbolas. And again, I want to emphasize that, it, you know, it, your, your future educations, you really should read before coming to lecture. And that would be from a textbook. You should read textbooks. Textbooks are really valuable learning experiences, right? Then you go to lecture, you listen to lecture, and you try to make sense out of what's material. Here's the deal, though. It takes a lot of effort to learn. It isn't something that we pour into your head and all of a sudden it's going to change you. It's something that you do. It's an activity. Education's an activity, not something that's given to you. All right, so we'll go through lecture. I'll explain the material to you. Hopefully you're gonna study that material. Hopefully you're gonna to listen to me during the uh, example sessions. Hopefully you're gonna study those examples. But the bottom line, your intent at some point is to work through examples on your own. And we provide problem sets for you. And we want you to go through those problem sets. After you do that, yes, it's a lot of effort. You're going to do the web assigned. Web assigned should be very simple after you go through what we're giving you. All right, let's go to the next page. And we're going to talk through this lips over here. All right, so what I'm going to do over here is when I talk through it, you know, certainly I'm seeing a picture over here. And, you know, looking at the picture, <coughs> I, I clearly see the ellipse. All right, so let me just point out what I mean by that. I'm seeing this object over here, which I would describe as being an ellipse. And I'm gonna kind of trace through that. And if someone says, why do you trace through it? Not that you have to, but I wanna get a feel for what they're, they're talking about over here. And they're talking about an ellipse over here. And again, someone says, oh, you're doing a lousy job tracing over it. I just wanna make sure you know that there's a picture there. And that picture is a picture of an ellipse with some other features. And we'll go through those other features for you. All right, one thing I wanna point out is I'm seeing this point over here and if someone said to you, what would you describe that point as? I would describe that point as a center of this thing. And it is a center. So I put this over here and I'll write down center. And the center point looking at it. And again, I'm saying if it's accurately drawn, I'm not saying it's gonna be terribly accurate, but I'm looking at it. If they're not deceiving me, I would say the center is one comma minus two. All right, All right let me keep going. I'm gonna talk about this point over here. Now this point over here, it, it's actually a vertex of the problem, all right? So I'm gonna say this is one of the vertex. So there's gonna be two vertices. I'll just call vertices a vertex. And there's a vertex over here. And I'll write them down for you. And again, if it's accurately drawn and I'm trusting the picture, I'm gonna say it looks like the point one, two here. 
And the other point, that lower point, you know, I'm going to say it looks like one minus six. All right. Now, by the way, I also like to get these points over here. Although not normally labeled, they're generally really easy to come up with. And let me write those points down. All right. So that point over there, looking at it, it looks about three minus two to me. And this point over here, looking at it, looks like minus one, uh, let's see, minus two, All right? I'm gonna to start to describe things to you. I'm gonna describe distances for you. So this is the center. The distance from the center to that vertice over there, well, if you looked at it, you just count it, it would be one, two, three, four. Now, if you go in the other direction, what do you get? One, two, three, four. So it's four units from the center to this thing over here. Now, if I look at this distance over here, it's only two units, and this is only two units. So I'm seeing a lot of symmetry over here, but I'm gonna say that the longest distance would be along the vertical axis. We call this a major axis of the problem. So let me write that down for you. This over here is the major axis. And what's the equation of that over there? Well, looking at it, it looks like X equals well, again, I'm looking at it. I'm hoping I can trust the picture. One, this over here is called the minor axis. It's the shortest one. And what's that going to be? Y equals, well, looking at it, it looks like minus two to me. All right. So I'm going to say, for the most part, we have everything covered except for the foci. All right. And there's a description for the foci. But right now, let's not worry about the foci. I'm going to just, I'm going to label these things over here. So I'm going to label, you know, let's see, um, then yellow. This is a foci. And this is a foci over here. Or a focus, I should say. Okay. So someone's going to, you know, what are those points? We're looking at it. Clearly, I know something true about that point. If the thing is accurately drawn, what do I know? I know the X is one. What I don't know, looking at the picture, is I really don't know what the Y chord is in either case, but what I want to claim to you looking at it, and again, this is just looking, we're kind of just at the, the primitive level of seeing a picture. I'm, I'm seeing that this distance here appears to be the same distance that's over there. I just don't know what that distance is, other than the fact that I could ballpark it, you know, one, two, three, three points something in. All right. I just don't know what that is. All right, we'll talk about that. Now, what I want to do is I want to go to the actual equation, right? Before I do that, though, I want to make sure you understand that we talked about certain things. I'm going to outline this for you, right? We talked about the foci. We talked about vertices. We talked about the major axes. We talked about the center. Uh, and we talked about the minor axis. All right, let me read this to you. And again, this is the tough part. It says over here, and again, there's a derivation in the notes itself. It says an ellipse is set of all points x, y, where the sum of the distances from two distinct points called the foci is constant. All right, so let me, let me point out what they're saying over there. They're saying there's a point in this where the distance, right, I'll read that again to you. It says an ellipse is the set of points x, y. Let me write this down over here. This is the point x, y. It's a set of them, and there's an infinite number of points over there, where the sum of the distance, right, the sum of the distance from the two distinct points of foci is a constant. Well, that's interesting. So all I say is that this thing I put in gray, that sum is always going to be the sum. It's always going to be the same for all the points x, y. And that's the complete derivation. And that's certainly in your notes as well. We'll get to that later and we'll talk about it, all right? The line through the foci intersects the ellipse at two points called the vertices, right? We, we covered that looking at the picture. The line segment joining the two vertices called the major axis, well, we covered that looking at the picture. And the midpoint on the line segment is called the center. And we covered that in the picture, all right? The chord, someone says, what's a chord? Through the midpoint, and this is, we'll read it to you. Let me outline that for you. They talk about a chord now. 
the cord through the midpoint on the line segment is called the center, I'm sorry, the cord through the midpoint that is perpendicular to the major axis is called the minor axis. Well, let me point out what they're talking about now. They're talking about this cord, all right? They're talking about it, all right? Through the midpoint perpendicular to the major axis called the minor axis. Well, we label that in the picture too, all right? So what do we do? We just simply talk through a visualization of what we just read, all right? Now here comes the problem. You're gonna be given an equation, right? Of that ellipse, and it looks like this over here. My goal is to do exactly what you did with circles. And I'll write this down on the side for you. So four X squared plus Y squared. And we're gonna remind you what you did with circles, minus eight Y, which goes back to, you know, this course certainly, we've done circles for some time. 119, they, re, they, they redid the circle. And in 100 is where the circle is introduced. So it's a little bit different, but I wanna go through it with you. So what do you do with circles? You, you kind of rearrange things. And again, we'll talk about the picture later. I would put the X together like you did with circles. And I put the Y's together just like you did with circles. And then what I do is I add the constant to both sides, just like you did with circles. Here comes the problem. What what'd you do next with circles? You complete the square. Well, I gotta be honest with you, completing the square in this one is super simple. All you gotta do, half of the four, which is two, and square it, and what would you get? You would get four. And what, what would they say do? Add four to both sides. And I'll write that down for you. All right? Now here comes the tough part. Completing the square in this thing is gonna be a little bit strange for students, so what I'm gonna to claim to do is, you still want the coefficients to be one. So let me write that down for you. So I'm gonna write down, that would be four X squared minus two X. Well, we're not done with that yet, but I'm gonna write this down as a perfect square now. And you're gonna get faster with this over time. Now this thing's gonna be Y plus two, right? So what I'm gonna do now is emphasize, we're gonna complete the square on this guy. And how would you do that? Well, the coefficient is one. That's what you learn in math 100. So what do you have to do? Half of that, which would be minus one squared, it would be plus one. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add one. Now someone says, are you gonna add one to both sides? Well, I'm really not adding one. What am I adding? I'm adding four, not one, I'm adding four. So I'm gonna write that down for you. So what I'm gonna do, add four to this side. All right, let's go to the next step and I'll write it down for you. What do you got four? x minus one squared plus y plus two squared is equal to 16. Now to make the problem easier, and there's nothing wrong with the way it's written, but to make the problem easier, what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide both sides of the equation or every term by 16. All right, now what do you get there? Well, looking at it, you're gonna get something that's pretty nice. You get x minus one squared over four plus y plus two squared over 16 is equal to one. Now, by the way, I'm not looking at the picture yet. I just want to talk about really simple points, simple points. The one simple point I could come up with over here is just simply set at, I'm sorry, not x y to be equal to minus two. Well, if you did that, what would you get? You would get x minus one squared over four. And if I said y to be minus two, this term disappears. What am I left off with? I'm left off with one. We'll go back to the picture later, but right now, I just wanna talk about really simple points. <coughs> Excuse me. What's the solution to this equation over here? It's fairly simple. X would have to be, well, let's see, you know, what number squared would give you four because I want the ratio to be one. Well, that would have to be two. So X minus one has to be two. So what does that mean? X could be three or X could be minus one. So now I got two simple points and I'll write that down for you. So the one simple point I have is gonna be minus one comma minus two. 
The other simple point I have is going to be three minus two. And that satisfies the equation. Now, some of you are going to say, could I have done that looking at the original equation? You could have, but it would have been much more difficult. This is why we like this form over here. We like this form. And there's a reason for it. It's easy. Let me go to two more simple points, and then we'll go back to the graph and look at it. All right? So I'm going to put another simple point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set. Let me go back. I'm going to set x to be 1. Now, if I did that, again, I'm going to emphasize, why would I do that? This disappears. And what would you get over there? A really simple equation. You would get y plus 2 squared over 16 is equal to 1. And that's also really easy to do. And why is that? The top number would have to be 16 because 16 divided by 16 is 1. And what would do that? Well, looking at it, again, it's a really simple equation. I would say y equals 2. And why is that? 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16. And what's the other number? y would be equal to, let me take a look at that. I would say minus 6. And why is that? Minus 6 plus 2 is minus 4. And minus 4 uh, squared is 16. So I got two more points. And let's write those down. And again, we'll write them down one at a time. So it's going to be 1, comma, minus 6. And the other point would be 1, comma, 2. All right? Now, what I want to do is I want to go back and look at the picture. But I'm claiming that these are going to be four points on the picture. Let's go back. And I want to emphasize that going backwards sometimes can be difficult because you may lose track of this. And let's see if we've done that if correctly. And did I get the um, points? And I'm going to go through this one time. Well, I'm seeing the point on the graph minus one, minus two. That's right over here. Do I see the point three minus two on the graph? And I do. That's right over here. And where is that? That's along the minor axis. Let me see if it's the other point, one minus six. I'm seeing that. It's right there. I'm hoping you're seeing that too. And the other point I'm seeing is one, two. I'm seeing them all. All right. So someone says, if you could do that, you've got four points along the curve. And if you ever do that, you're going to know exactly what the ellipse looks like. You'll have four points and be able to draw an ellipse through it. Really simple. You'll also be able to identify the center. How would you do that? Look at those four points and you can identify the center with that. Just by looking at the four points, you can get the center from that. But again, I'm going to claim you would need to graph that. So I'm going to claim that center is going to be really easy to get if you're looking at those four points. Now, what's the center over here? I'll write that down for you. I'm looking at it. Well, it's, it's going through the center of that. So the X would have to be one. And what would the Y have to be? Minus two, just looking at the four points. And we'll go through other examples, of course. All right, so I get the center down. Not so, not so difficult, by the way. What's gonna be difficult though, I wanna be honest with you, is gonna be the, um, that, the foci. And we'll talk about it now. Now, again, we did not derive this. This is given to you, and I want to tell you where it's given. It's given over here. I'm going to write this down looking at it. So it has something to do with a C. We'll talk about that later. All right? So I'm going to write this down for you. The C squared, whoops, sorry about that. The C squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. Now, by the way, the, the a doesn't have any particular position problem. For this to be true though, the a would have to be larger than the b. So let me write this down. So c squared, what's it larger than the two numbers over there? 16. This is the a squared and this is the b squared. All right, so what do you get over there? Minus the b squared, which is four. So what's the C squared? It's 12. What's the C? The C is going to be the square root of 12. Now, some of you put plus or minus root 12. It really doesn't much matter to me, but I'll say C is equal to, well, just looking at it, I'm going to say plus or minus. Well, looking at square root of 12, I would say it's 4 times 3. C equals plus or minus 2 root 3. 
And someone says, why do I need to get that? Well, I want to talk about these foci. And what I'm going to claim over here is the foci, and this comes from the defining feature of this thing, and, and the derivation is probably the notes. The foci are along the major axes, and they're going to be C units in from the center. They're going to be C units in from the center. So I think I'm ready to write that down. Generally speaking, these are nasty looking numbers, right? So I'm going to put the first foci down. And what's that going to be? The first foci. We're talking about this foci over here. Well, one thing I do know is along the major axes, and what's the x-coordinate there? One. Now, if it's C units in from the center, I would have to know that that center starts at minus two. And if I go up, someone says, how much do you go up? C units. Do you remember what C is? I hope so. We just did it. It's plus two root three. All right, I want to do this foci. Oops, sorry about that. It's still at one. And I'm sorry, did I do a mistake over? No, no, minus two. And then I got to go down. How much will go down? C units. So if you go down, it's minus two root three. All right, so I'm going to say we kind of covered that one out. Not bad. We were able to do that. What's the deal over here, though? This we did not derive. In the notes though, there's a derivation of the formula. I wouldn't worry so much about horizontal and vertical at this point. What I would worry about is, can you get your equations in that form? And we'll go to examples. Let me go to the next page, all right? So next page, I wanna point out, if you're looking at it, I do put all the answers down there for you. And we went through that. What's the big deal over there? For most students, believe it or not, at this stage of the game, it's coming up with these guys over here. Let me go back to the prior page and make sure you know that they're written down for you. We did that, all right? Minus two plus two root three, minus two minus two root three. And that's the y-coordinate. Got those written down there, all right? So yeah, I'm gonna say that it, it's not easy, all right? What's not easy? Deriving the formula. We've given it to you. All right, let's briefly talk about these things over here. The only one we're going to uh, talk about is ex ex eccentricity. And again, I'm not asking you to memorize. I'm asking you to read. All right, it's a technical term indicating deviation from circularity. All right, there's something about um, orbits that things go round and round and round. They may look circular, but there's a tendency to go off the circularity of it. And we call that the eccentricity of the problem. We define it as this, C, I suppose what the hell was C? Remember C was that distance from the center to the foci over the A. What's the A? It's the larger of the two numbers. All right, you may have to go back to those formulas over here. Again, you may wanna read about that. And typically I wanna point out in the newspaper we do talk about other things that so you see the apogee and perigree, but the bottom line is, you know, I'm gonna say that there are words that are used, but they may not be well understood. All right, you can read that if you like though. I will say this though, when you're doing problem sets, they're gonna be looking at this over here, all right? Don't need to memorize it. It'll be given to you if you need it, or you can write that down if you want. All right, I wanna talk about the next thing topic. And again, we'll go through examples later. The next one's hyperbola, all right, hyperbola. Now, hyperbola is a typical, you know, word we use in the English language, but um, for the most part, it's got a defining feature, and let's talk about it, all right? So we're, we're now going to talk about hyperbola, all right? Hyperbola is a set of points, x, y. The difference of whose distances from two distinct points, the foci, I know it's tough is a positive constant, all right? So someone's gonna say, do you have a picture to tell me what that means? So but hyperbola is a set of points x, y, the difference of those distances, not the sum this time, right? Is gonna be fixed to some kind of foci, all right? Let's take a look at a picture next page. And what I wanna talk about is just this picture over here. 
all right? So I wanna label things as I'm looking at it. And before I do anything, I wanna draw in what the hyperbola is and I'm tracing over it. Goes on forever like that. And it goes on forever like that. It's also over here. Again, I'm looking at a picture. And I'm gonna write down some points for you, all right? One point at a time. I wanna do this point over here. Well, looking at it, I'm gonna say that point there looks like a center of this thing. What's the center looking at my picture? One comma minus two. Now, if I look at this point over here, I would describe this as one of the vertices of the problem. And let's take a look at that. There's two vertices with plural vertice. What's that point gonna be? Three, and again, I'm looking at my picture, by the way. I'm not saying I got it ended away by looking at a picture. It looks like three minus two to me. What's this vertice over here? Well, let's take a look at it. It looks like minus one, minus two. Now, what's this line over here? I'm just gonna say it's a line of symmetry, right? I'm gonna call it an axis of symmetry, an axis. And that, that axis is vertical. And what's that gonna be? It's the equation of a line. It's y equals... What is that? Y equals, no, not Y, I'm gonna say it crazy. It's X equals, X equals what? X equals one, all right? I'm also gonna talk about the other points and I'm gonna talk about this point over here and this point over here and they're called foci. So this is a, one of the focus and this is the other focus over here, all right? So we'll go back to the description. What I wanna talk about is, I wanna get back to that equation now. And I want to see if that equation has any relationship to these points I'm coming up with, with the exception of foci. I really can't read the foci, except, you know, looking at the points of these foci, I do know one thing about it. It appears to be the Y coordinate appears to be minus two in both cases. What I really can't get from you though, is looking at it, I really don't know what the X is, except I know it appears to be between four and five. And I really don't know what this is. It appears to be minus three and minus two. I just don't know exactly what it is looking at the picture. I could ballpark and I'm not saying I can't, but what I want to do is I want to talk about, you know, are these points except with the exception of the foci, can I read those from the graph? Yes. Can I get it from the equation? I don't know. I'm going to write this down for you. So I'll write it down on the side. And again, this is an example of a conic section called the hyperbola. And again, it's just an introduction. And what am I gonna do over here? I'm gonna kind of look at and get a feel for it. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did with circles. I, I try to get the X's together, right? There's some subtlety that we're not discussing at this point, but for the most part, I'm just kind of looking around. And let's see, minus 16 Y, right? Equals 43. Again, we'll look at the points later. I'm just going through a little bit at a time. And I'm looking at that. I realize I want to complete the script. I could do it circles, but I got troubles over here. I'll tell you what they are. I, complete script, I can't have a coefficient of nine. It's got to be one. So I'm going to factor out the nine. And over here, I got another trouble. I, I can't have negative coefficients when I'm doing complete square. So I have to factor out you know, the minus four to make that coefficient one. And let me do that for you. Let's see, that would be plus four, right? All right, let's complete the square. And let me point out what we're doing over here. Half of this guy, which would be minus one, square, it would be plus one. Now here's the problem. Some of you think they're adding one. You're not adding one, you're adding nine. So I'll write that down now. Let's do the next one. Over here, half of this is two. When you square it, you get four. So I'm gonna add four. Here's the problem. I'm really not adding four. I'm subtracting 16. And I'll write that down for you. All right, let's go to the next step, which is writing down what the squares are. Let's see, what would you get over there? A y plus two, that's pretty simple. Squared, 
And mistakes happen. You're going to make mistakes when you do homework too. That, that's a given. So what'd you get over there? Let's see. 36, right? Let me make sure of that. And, you know, 43 and nine is 52. 42. Yeah, 36. That's pretty simple. Then what do we do? Well, to make our life easier, and there's nothing wrong with it right now, but to make our life easier, we're going to actually divide both sides by 36. And there's a reason why they call it standard form, because it's easy. Let's write this down, what you get. You get x minus 1 squared over 4 minus y plus 2 squared over 9. That's not so bad, right? Equals 1. Now, someone says, what are the easy points? And I would say for most people, you want to get rid of things. And if I did that, Let's say you say, oh, I want to get rid of the first term and you said X to be one. Unfortunately, if you did that, what would you get? You would get this. Which has no solution. When I say no solution, no real solution. So that's a bad idea. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to erase that. That's a really bad idea, but I thought it would make it easy, but it's just a bad idea. I don't want to do complex numbers. So then the question is, what, what else could you do? Well, you could make the second term disappear by setting y equal to minus two. Well, let's do that. What would you get? You would get x minus one squared over four is equal to one. Now, why is that? This second term would disappear if y is minus two. Now, now, now I got something easy. I have a really easy equation to solve. What would it have to be? It would have to be, you know, the left side would have to be one. The right side is one. So what would make the, the, the left side one? Well, I guess if you chose three, right? So I'll put this over here. So X could be three. And why is that? Three minus one is two and two squared is four. And what else could it be? X could also be minus one because minus one minus one is minus two and minus two squared is four. So I've got two really simple points now. So three comma, right? Minus two. And the other really simple point I have is gonna be what? Let's take a look. That would be what? It would be minus one, minus two. These are two simple points. By the way, these are the only simple points I've got for the curve. You might say, I want to get other ones, go to town, but these are the only simple ones I have. All right. So when I say simple, simple, I mean, really it requires very little thought to get those. Let me go back to my picture though. And this is my picture over here. And I want to see if I see those points. Three minus two. I'm seeing that. And the other point I'm seeing is minus one, minus two. Right over here. Hoping you're seeing that. And what are those points called? The vertices. So I found my vertices. All right, that's pretty simple. What else could you do? Yeah, and I know it's tough. You could get the center. I'll write this down for you. So what am I looking for the midpoint between those two points. And what's that gonna be? Add the, add the points together. So minus one plus three is two over two. And minus two plus two is gonna be minus four over two. That's the midpoint, right? Between those two points. What would that give you? One minus two. What's this thing over here? It's the center. We got that part covered. All right, now what goes through that center? A line of symmetry, and you should expect that. What's a line of symmetry? It would have to be X equals one. And I'm seeing that too, all right? So I'm gonna point out, you know, we've got a lot of information over here. Some things that we're missing now is we're missing these focal points. I'm not gonna say that's gonna be terribly important to graph it, and it's not, but they're gonna ask for the focus, but I'm gonna hold off on that. What I wanna start talking about is behavior. And when I talk about behavior, I, I spelled vertices all crazy in there. Let me get my eraser out. These are the vertices. Okay, I'm gonna talk about behavior. And what I'm gonna do is asymptotic behavior. 
Now, if you remember back to math, you know, 119, when you did asymptotes, what you were looking at is when X gets really large or when Y got really large. I'm going to look at both of those though. When I say large, they can be going to plus or minus infinity. So what I want to claim over here, if you're looking at that and X and Y go to plus or minus infinity, well, what happens if they're being squared? Right, they're being squared. So it doesn't matter if it's plus or minus infinity. Both of those terms are going to go towards infinity. Both terms. Now, what do I know about both of those terms? They differ. What do they differ by one? I hope you can agree though, if things are getting extremely large, differing by one is gonna be incidental. They're not gonna be differing by much. They're only differing by one. And when they're at the infinities, it's almost like if you're a bajillionaire and your bajillion, bajillionaire neighbor makes an extra dollar, I don't think you're gonna fret over it. So what I'm gonna say over here is, if this is true, they're going toward plus or minus infinity, these two terms would be equal. I wanna write that down for you. So someone said, that looks crazy. They're equal. Well, what I'm gonna say over here is, if this is true, and we'll go through other examples, by the way, as plus or minus infinity, y, x, y, plus or minus infinity, these two terms are relatively equal in the limit. We do say they're equal in the limit. This is actually just an equation of a line. And I wanna go through that with you. I just used the reflexive property of equality. What I'm gonna do is multiply both sides by nine now. And I'm gonna use the square root rule now. And what do I get? Y plus two is equal to plus or minus. I'm using the square root rule like you're on math 100. Square root of nine is three. Square root of four is two, X minus one. This gives me my two, two of my asymptotes and I'll write them down for you. So two asymptotes. First one, y plus two equals three halves x minus one. The other one is y plus two is minus three halves x minus one. All right. I want to point out, looking at my picture over here, <coughs> I'm going to draw them. <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to draw them in. And yeah, generally draw them in. I'll do a great job of it. All right, I'm gonna point this out to you. This is the one that has positive slope. Give me one second. This is the one that has positive slope. This is the one that's negative slope, All right? As we start drawing pictures though, I wanna make sure you get comfortable with this, all right? That you get comfortable with drawing those asymptotes in. Not that we're looking for great pictures, but we do provide better pictures for you in the notes. All right, one, one last topic, and that's going to be the foci. I realize this is an overview. This might be overwhelming to you, and I might have to go back and think about this, all right? But, you know, the defining feature of this hyperbola, we've described that. There's a derivation in the, in the notes for you, but right now, let's just talk about it. And we're going to just walk through it, you know, step by step, and they talk about this C again, all right? I'm going to point out what the C is. It's actually easier for hyperbolas. So the C squared, I'm going to write this down for you. The C squared is going to be, well, remember for the ellipse, it was the difference between those. Now it's going to be the sum. And this comes from the derivation formula, four plus nine. I'll write that down for you. It's tough. I'm not saying it's easy. And we'll go through examples. I realize it's overwhelming. You get 13, right? So what's C going to be equal to? plus or minus the square root of 13. Then someone says, what do you do? Well, here's the deal. It's really nice to have a picture before you do this because you're gonna know approximately where they are if you have a picture. So what I'm gonna say, it's, it's in from the center. Now someone says in from the center, what does that mean? Do I go left or right, up or down? This is why a picture is so important for you. No memorization of picture. So if you look at this over here, 
I know what the center is. And I'm going to write this down for you. The center, I know. And I'm looking at my picture over here. I know my center is one minus two. Now, if you have a picture, if someone says, what does in mean? You're looking at the picture. And this is the picture over here. It's got to be on the inside of this thing over here. It's right over here. It's got to be the inside. So if you go in, how much do you have to go in? You must go in root 13. So that's in that direction, root 13, and in that direction, root 13. I'm going to write them down for you now, foci. So what's not changing? Well, if you thought about it, the y is not changing. The y is always going to be minus 2. Now, you, if you're at the center, which is going to be 1, and you move in root 13, that would be 1 plus root 13. What's the other one going to be? Well, you're moving to the left. It's going to be 1 minus root 13. All right. Now, if you look at this over here, it's actually in the notes. And the reason we write this stuff down is so you can look at it and you can verify that what we just said is true. All right. Let's take a look at another problem. And again, hyperbola is a lot more difficult. I'm looking at this problem over here. And what I'd like to do is go through it with you. And I'm going to pull it on the side for you. I'm going to pull this on this side. Give me one second to do so. And again, the reason we're providing pictures for you is we want you to look at the pictures. All right. So, oh boy, I got I to gotta move things around. I'm sorry about that. Let me get this over here. All right. Let's one thing at a time. They provide a picture. I really don't know what the numbers are looking at them. And let me tell you why. A lot of times what I do when I give you pictures, I start to like, you know, change scale, like over here, you know, this is five. You know, if I looked at, I might say, oh, gee whiz, it's four. And then over here, I might say, oh, gee whiz, it looks like minus three to me. But I really have no numbers now here. So I don't know if I'm, my, I'm being deceived. So what I want to do is I want to take this guy. I still want to use my picture, by the way. Right now, I'm going to look at my picture. I'm going to put other things in my picture. I'm going to put in my, you know, asymptotes over here. And again, these are rough pictures. I'm not saying they're great pictures. Right? There's asymptotes over here. What does that mean? It looks like something like this over here. I'm not very good at asymptote drawing. I realize that. Something like this over here. And I'm going to start labeling these points over here. So this is going to be the center. I'm not really sure what that is yet. This over here is going to be one of the vertices. This here is going to be one of the vertices. This over here is going to be a foci, a focus. And this is going to be a focus. And I'm just going to draw that hyperbola in here. And yeah, you should practice drawing on paper, drawing over too. All right, there's nothing I didn't put in this the axis symmetry. Put this over your axis. And you know, what do I know about the axis? You know, it's this thing over here. And that looks like, you know, y equals something. I just don't know what it is. So let's go through it. And we're gonna fill all the information down for you. First thing to do, I know it's difficult. But I need to take that thing and I'll write down for you. Nine y squared plus 54y. Right? I did this guy, this guy, minus 4x squared plus 32x equals 19. And what I do in the past, let me put that up there. I'm not going to look at the picture right now. I just want to see if I can get through it. What's nice about a picture though, I can actually go back and look at the picture, see if I'm doing okay. Well, I'm gonna factor out a nine because I want the coefficient of y squared to be one. So what do I get? Nine y squared. We tend to use numbers that are pretty simple and, and nine times what would be 54? Six. I'm gonna factor out minus four for the next two terms. And the reason why I want the coefficient of the x squared to be one Minus eight 
equals 19. I haven't changed much. So if I make a mistake, I'll find out. So what am I gonna do now? I'm gonna put square. Half of six is three, square it, you get plus nine. I did not add nine though. I added 81. All right, let's do the next one. Half of minus eight is minus four. If you square that, that's 16. I did not add 16. I subtracted 64. If that takes time and effort on your part to do, please take the time and the effort to do that. Let's write this down. And what do you get? Nine y plus three squared minus four x minus four squared equals well, I think I can come up with this. And when we're looking over there, you know, I'm looking at the 19 and 81. That's 100. And if you subtract 30, 64 from that, you would get 36. Now, I'm not opposed to writing it that way, but most books wouldn't write it that way. What they would do now is they would divide both sides or every term by 36. And the reason for that, it, it actually makes it easier to analyze it. And what would you get over there? Let's write that down you would get y plus three squared over four minus x minus four squared over nine equals one. So I'm gonna say over here, looking at this thing over here and I'm getting a little better at it. And what I mean by that, you know, I have a picture to help me with it. And that's part of your learning curve. You're gonna be looking at, you know, pictures, right? Pictures can be very helpful. They can inform you about what you're doing over here. And what I'm gonna do over here is I'm looking at it and, and certainly have more experience, but not great experience in this. I'm going to set x equal four. And so why would you do that? It makes this term disappear. And I'm left off with something really simple to look at now, which is y plus three squared over four is equal to one. And what, what would make this a true statement? Well, I would say y Let's look at it. I want to make the top four, right? So I would say minus one would do that because minus one plus three is two and two squared is four. What's another number that would do that? And again, if this takes you time and effort, put the time and effort into it. Let's take a look. I would say minus five. Let's see if that's true. Minus five plus three is minus two and minus two squared is, well, that's four. Four, five, four is one. So I got two points. And these are known as the vertices. Where are those two points? Well, x is four, y is minus one, x is four, y is minus five. I'm gonna go back to the picture and I wanna see if I see those points, right? I wanna see if I see those points. Let's look for four minus one first. I'm seeing it. This is the point four minus one. I see that. Do I see the other point? The other point I'm supposed to see is four minus five. And again, this is part of your learning curve. Four minus five. Wow, that was pretty simple. It's right on the mark. Four minus five. Now, what else do I notice in my picture? There's a center. Now, I'm looking at the center, and the center's got to be between those two points, just looking at it. So what would the center be? Well, the x coordinate is certainly four. And what's the dead center between minus one and five, uh, minus one and minus five? Well, add those two numbers together and that would be minus six divided by two. And what do you get? You get minus three. I wanna go back. I could have actually read that from my standard form. Let me go with the HK, right? Well, what's h going to be? Looking at it, remember we talked about this with circles. That would have to be four. It's the number on the x that makes the that x term disappear would be four, and the number on the y that would make the y term would be minus three. I can read that right from there. I got it. So I got this. I got this. I got this. All right. <coughs> Let's do the asymptotes. All right, a little more difficult, but let's do it. 
foci, I didn't like to say foci for the last, right? Foci really don't help me draw the picture. But what I say about the, uh, the asymptotes, I said that the, when X and Y gets really large, these things will always differ by one, but when they get really large, if they differ by one, they essentially look the same in the limit. Let's write that down for you. So I'm gonna write down Y plus three squared over four would look the same as X minus four uh, squared over nine as X and Y go towards plus or minus infinity. That's true in asymptotic behavior. So I'm gonna to try to solve that. What do you get? Y plus three squared, that would be four ninths. And you get X minus four squared. Square root rule, Y plus three plus or minus, the square root of four ninths is two thirds, X minus four. I'm getting my two asymptotes. All right, so I'm gonna point out, you know, one asymptote I'm getting, it's got a positive slope. It just went over here. And then one with a negative slope over here. All right. The only thing we didn't do is the foci. Let's briefly go through that. And I'm gonna to have to um, talk about that now. I don't think I did the foci for this one, did I? Sorry about it, I moved something. And let me just see. Okay, we'll do it. We'll do it now. Sum of the two numbers, that's what C squared is. What are the two numbers talking about? Four and nine, that's 13. What's C gonna be equal to? Plus or minus root 13. All right, let's look at our picture. Keep that in the back of your mind. I wanna point out what we're doing. We're going in from the center to the foci. So we're gonna go in from the center, how much root 13? Let's write this down now. Well, the X is not changing, the X is four. But what are we doing? We're going in root 13. So we're going in on the Y's, right? So it's gonna be minus three plus root 13. What's this one over here? This is the foci over here. Well, it's still gonna be four. And what are we doing? We're going in root 13, but we're going down. Hope you realize we're going down. All right, what's that gonna be? Let's write this down. The Y is at minus three, but we're going down root 13 now. All right, let me go back to the notes. And I think for the most part, we're gonna talk about those solutions and then those solutions are in your notes, by the way. I'm gonna go to the next page, see if they're written down for you. Yeah, they're written down for you, all right? So uh, also the asymptotes are written down for you. A better picture's written down for you over here with all the, all the asymptotes in. You may wanna go back and look at these guys over here and relabel these graphs. We did both problems already though. We did both problems, all right? Let's go to the next page. No, there is no next page. What do we gotta do now? Go to examples. I realize this is overwhelming. All right, we'll go to examples. And uh, as we go to examples, we hope it's less overwhelming for you.